Here's the example from the previous video. I hope most of that previous video was review from other videos. We see how the compiler converted our Lambda expression into a normal method, and thus .NET can actually use this code and execute it, compile it, that kind of thing. All right, I'm going to come around here and, and wrap our func here. Remember, func is a delegate type. I'm going to wrap it and make it a parameter, a type parameter, into expression. All right, let me control dot on that and get the using link dot expressions in here. And notice we get the red squiggly here. One thing to know about expressions is they, unlike delegates, they cannot refer directly to methods. Okay, they're made purely for lambda expressions. So let me put our lambda expression back in there and say bye bye to our method we created. So that's one thing to note different from expressions is that when you assign a lambda expression to an expression object, the C-sharp compiler jumps in and does a whole bunch of syntactical sugar for us, but part of that sugar is not to convert this lambda expression to a method as it did with func. All right, if I take the expression part out here, then sure enough, the compiler will convert this to a method just like I've shown you in previous videos. All right, but once I wrap that func in there as a type parameter into expression, Okay, expression is a generic type. Let me click on expression, hit F12 and go look at it. Expression is a generic type. That's what the curlies, not the curlies, the angle brackets mean. You can go look at my generic videos if necessary. But it takes a, a delegate here, and we'll get into all of what's going on here in a minute. But basically, expression takes a delegate parameter type, and, and now the compiler does not convert our lambda expression to a method, as I've shown you in previous videos. In fact, you can see I can't even invoke expression like a delegate because it's not a delegate so let's get rid of those two lines by hitting control L twice. Okay what the compiler does instead here is it looks at the lambda expression and and basically converts it to a bunch of objects. Right? How do you like that for an abstract definition? Let me try to explain. I'm gonna console write line test and Remember, I don't even like test anymore. Let's call it exp for expression. I'll call it expression here. And let's just write out, there's, there's various properties and things we can look at here, but I'm interested in the body. So I'm going to write expression.body and control F5. That you can see, hey, look at that. The body is i greater than 5. That's interesting that the two string did that. Let's, let's go a little further and say, hey, what is the actual type of this body? body thing. Let me run that. And, oh, it's a logical binary expression. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I, I, I was doing some offline research, and I know that logical binary expression inherits from binary expression. So I'm going to say binary expression bin for, well, I'll just call it binary. Why not? Binary expression. Let's cast, do a downcast here, expression.body. We know that expression.body uh, returns something that inherits from binary expression. So this should be legal. Now watch watch this. Watch this. This is a binary expression. I'm going to say binary.left. Okay, console right line binary.left. Console right line binary oops, binary.right. All right, control of 5 on that and hey, look at this. Look at this. The left returns this i thing and the right returns this 5 thing. You know what, even I'm gonna go a little further here. Let's console right line binary dot uh, node type. Okay, let's run that, control F5, and hey, look at what we got here. I greater than five. I greater than five. So when I tell you that the compiler literally converts this this lambda expression into something that will create objects at runtime, that's exactly what happened here. Notice I'm getting this binary object and it has a left and a right, and it has a node type, and so the left is i, which is true, it's an i, it's our parameter i, and then we have greater than, which is our node type, which, sure enough, that's that, and then we have this binary dot right, which is our 5. Okay, let me, let me go a little further. I'm actually going to show you the code that the compiler generated. It, when the compiler sees this lambda expression, it has to generate code to turn this lambda expression into an expression object. So let me let me uh, pull up the Visual Studio command prompt and let's you remember I have that C batch file that will compile this file and then show us the reflected results and I want to go tools uh, is it tools or view view sorry view options I want to ensure that we're at .NET 1.0 let's make sure we don't see any of the sugar again and 
Here we go. Main class, main, main class. Let's look at main here. Double click and ooh, that's ugly. Let's let's look at C sharp here. Okay, look at this. This is this is kind of interesting. All right, this this is our lambda expression. <laughs> Remember this this uh, lambda expression we wrote in C sharp. This i where i is greater than five. The C sharp compiler converted it to well, there's our expression func int bool expression we've seen here, and then it says expression dot lambda, whole bunch of stuff. Ooh, expression dot greater than, and then expression three parameter type of int i, and then expression. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this line of code if I can. Let's copy that much. Control C. I'm going to paste it here. Get rid of this part though. I copied too much, and let me just see if I can format this exactly what the compiler did. Greater than, and there's this expression three thing. Do I need to worry about? It? Oh, it's a parameter expression. Let's copy that as well, and I'll just paste that right there. Okay, so we have our original original lambda, and then I'm using control down arrow to do that. And then let's, let's say what the compiler did. Okay, greater than expression three gets this thing. Expression parameter. Yeah, I'm trying to format this in a way that makes sense. Parameter, new parameter expression, expression three. Whew. Okay, I, I'm not going to pick apart all this, but I just want to kind of give you the general idea here that, that we said expression lambda. Okay, we are making a lambda expression. And then furthermore, we're passing in expression dot greater than. All right, and the first argument to greater than, remember here is our greater than operator. The first argument will be this parameter expression, which is of type int, and its name is i. And then the right-hand side, notice the comma here, that's the, this makes up the first parameter to the greater than. The second parameter is this constant expression, which is of type int, and its value is 5. And then, looky right here, we have parameter expressions. This is the parameters to the lambda, so this is that i part there. And that might be a little confusing. I'm going to try to break this down in the upcoming videos. But when I, before, right, and I'll show you this, before when we were just assigning this to a regular delegate, the compiler turned around and generated code. But then once I wrap that delegate type up into an expression, the C sharp compiler kicks in and basically turns that expression into something that will create objects at runtime. Okay, runtime objects that we can use in our code. And it's actually quite useful, quite powerful, especially when interfacing with outside resources like a database. The entity framework relies on this behavior heavily. And anyway, we'll pick apart we'll pick all that apart and get into it uh, slowly but surely in the upcoming videos.